uh, following question. Mohammed from Norway had three questions. Um, um, he called last few minutes yesterday, and one of his questions is, what is the reward of reading uh, the uh, salawat upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I want to share with you a very interesting hadith, then an ayah, and I'll try to summarize it to the best of my ability because this is a very long subject. Sending the peace and the blessings, the salutation upon the Prophet Sallallahu is one of the greatest acts of worship, and it has a tremendous amount of virtues. Ubay ibn Ka'b, may Allah be pleased with him, is a great companion. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I awfully send the peace and the blessings upon you. Ukthiru salata alayk. So how often shall I actually uh, send the peace and the blessings upon you? This is in his life, sallallahu alayhi wa He said, as much as you want. Mashit. He said, uh, is one quarter enough? He said, as you wish, but if you give more, that is even better for you. He said, what about one half? He said, if you will, but if you increase, this is better for you. Two thirds, likewise, he said, أَجْعَلُ لَكَ صَلَاتِي كُلَّهَا Shall I make all my invocations instead of spending time to pray for myself or can I just <coughs> spend all the time in sending peace and the blessings upon you and sending the salutation upon you? So the Prophet ﷺ said إِذَنْ تُكْفَى هَمَّكْ وَيُغْفَرُ لَكَ ذَنْبُكْ Which means in this case all your worldly needs will be fulfilled and all your sins will be forgiven. What do we understand from this hadith? We understand that, that making dua, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for any needs, whether worldly needs or needs of the hereafter to enter paradise, to be forgiven, to be with the Prophet in paradise. If the person spent quality time sending the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu this is one of the best forms of dua. So that's why in Taraweeh, in Tahajjud, in the Witr prayer, when the Imam starts saying, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad, the followers, the Imamumin, should say Ameen, because this is a dua. Versus when he's saying, Allahumma laka alhamdu kulluh, ala niyatuhu wa sirru, he's praising Allah, you're quiet, because this is a praise. But once he starts making dua, such as, O oh Allah, send the peace and the blessings upon Prophet Muhammad and the family of Prophet Muhammad, and so on. Then you say, Ameen. So Ubay ibn Ka'b used to awfully send the peace and the blessings upon him. He said, but how often shall I do it? Like if I sit for an hour and I make dua, one quarter is enough, he said. Fine, unless if you want to give more, this is better for you. One half, two thirds. Shall I just spend the whole time spending peace and uh, sending peace and blessings upon you. He said, in this case, all your needs will be fulfilled and your sins will be forgiven. Why? Because Allah the Almighty appreciates that so much that he began by himself. Then secondly, the angels. And then he commanded the believers to join Allah and his angels in sending the salutations upon his most beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The beautiful ayah of Surah Al-Ahzab says, Inna Allah, verily, most surely, Allah, wa malaikatahu, and his angels, yusalluna ala nabi. Allah blesses his Prophet. Allah accepts the supplications of the supplicant to bless and salute his Prophet. And the angels are constantly sending the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet and asking Allah to bless Prophet Muhammad. Oh, who you believe, Ya ayyuha ladina amanu, then join the crowd. Sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. You too should send the peace and the blessings upon him. Much of sending the peace and the blessings. In the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man salla alayya salatan, sallallahu alayhi biha ashra. Whoever sends his salutation upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him once, Allah the Almighty will bless him ten times for that. Will bless him ten times for that. This is very beautiful. Man salla alayya salatan. Once, Allah the Almighty will bless you ten times. Then, 
Uh, obviously, we have learned before there was a very interesting question about the etiquette of dua, and we said, if you really want your supplication to be accepted, then envelop your request uh, by sending the peace and the blessings in the beginning and by the end so that Allah the Almighty will accept the entire invocation. The previous hadith of Ubay ibn Ka'b doesn't mean at all that you should stop making dua but rather it encourages the believer to send much of peace and blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu And Allah knows what is in your heart. So if, for example, your son is attending the finals and you focus on, oh Allah, make it easy for him, make him pass, make him uh, succeed in the exam. Um, some people, will keep asking whether in their mother tongue or in whatever language, oh Allah, make it easy for him to give the right answer, etc. And others will keep saying, Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar, wa la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad. They uh, spend the time sending the peace and the blessings upon the Prophet Sallallahu Your mas'ala, your request is understood. And the answer will be delivered, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said. His second request is, what is the reward for reading Surat Al-Ikhlas? Surat Al-Ikhlas is such a wonderful surah that it, uh, it is equivalent to one third of the Quran as far as its recitation. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said so. Whoever recites Surat Al-Ikhlas once, will be rewarded as if he has recited one third of the entire Quran. Does it mean that if I recite it three times, it will be similar to reciting the whole Quran? Yes, it will be similar to reciting the whole Quran. This is a sound hadith. There are some other hadith. Uh, their authenticity are disputed. So for instance, there is one hadith which talks about uh, whoever recites Surah Al-Ikhlas. You know what Surah Al-Ikhlas to begin with? I'm sorry, sometimes I, uh, I, I forget that maybe we have some newcomers, new viewers, or some viewers who do not know certain terms. The word ikhlas means sincerity, and surah means a chapter of the Quran. So we're talking about surat al-ikhlas, surat qul huwa Allahu ahad. The chapter uh, <coughs> which uh, describes the traits of Allah the Almighty, it was revealed as an answer to the Jews in Medina who came to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and said describe your Lord for us describe your Lord and by the way same question I ask followers of other religions and different denominations and um, when somebody says I'm Christian I'm Catholic I'm Protestant I'm Unitarian said describe God I don't know because he is actually not one is more than one okay so you're not monotheistic so you don't believe in one God no no we believe in one God but it's actually three in one so the next comment I say well I'm confused I say I know I'm confused too قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ so Allah the Almighty described himself that's why this surah is such a great surah because it describes Allah and who would describe what he have never seen no one so Allah the Almighty described himself so that we will learn about his being. Say Allah is the only one. He didn't say wahid. He said ahad. The only one who has no second. He's not two nor three nor more in one. He's only one. He's the only one. Allah is samad. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. Wa lam yakul lahu kufuan ahad. And also he replied, to the people of the book when he said that Allah is the eternal is the self-sufficient and he said he begets not nor was he begotten and no one is ever equivalent to him so how can you draw his image while you have not visualized him how can you make a statue of God or say my God while you have never laid your eyes upon him how can you ascribe a son or a wife or a child to him? Why no one is ever equivalent to him. He is the uniquest. He is the omnipotent. He is the only one. And no one is ever equivalent 
to him. Because of that, this surah, it deals with the traits, with the attributes of Allah the Almighty. That's why it is equivalent to one third of the Quran. One of the Sahaba who used to recite Surah Al-Ikhlas in every rak'ah, even if he recites other surahs after Al-Fatiha, while leading Imam, he would recite Surah Al-Khalas. So the Prophet Sallallahu asked him, why do you do that? Because some of the companions complained. He said, because I love it. I love this surah. It talks about Allah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, حُبُّكَ إِيَّاهَ أَدْخَلَكَ الْجَنَّةِ You love to this chapter have caused you to enter paradise. You love the Surah Al-Ikhlas. The other hadith which talks about um, you know, the virtues of reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas ten times, as I said, its authenticity is disputed. Whoever recites Surah Al-Ikhlas ten times, Allah will build him a palace or a house in paradise. As I said, there is a difference of opinion between the scholars with regards to the authenticity of the hadith, whether it's weak or hasan. So recite Surah Al-Ikhlas as many times as you can. But most importantly, more important than the mere recitation is understanding the meaning of uh, the Surah. Um, Muhammad from Norway also says, if I want to finish reading the Quran once, what should I do? You mean once every month because now Ramadan is almost over. Uh, we have uh, five days left. Allah And the Quran is three uh, parts. So if you want to finish the whole Quran in five days, then you got to recite six parts or six paras uh, every day. Uh, it's easy and affordable, especially if you are in i'tikaf, and especially if you're not a sheikh. Because if you're a sheikh, and you are in Atikaf and all people are coming to ask you, you find it hard to recite even one page. And meanwhile, it is kind of difficult to work people off or to offend them and say, I'm sorry, I don't have time. Uh, I have to finish my paras. I'm saying this because this is happening with me now. You know, any time I spent in the masjid, mashallah, people have questions. And the questions are endless, never ending. So I've been carrying the Mus'haf in my hand, or I want to recite, uh, or even recite my Adhkar, but I don't have a chance to do it. That is okay. So if a person can read the six paras every day in the remaining five days, he will get to finish the whole Quran. During regular days, make a daily routine to recite one para. Those who have been reciting Quran regularly in Ramadan, reciting one part of the Quran after Ramadan every day will be like a piece of cake. After any prayer, if you pray Fajr and you sit 25 minutes, 30 minutes, you're done. You recited one para. Then during the day, spare some time to study the meaning of one ayah. Or if while you're reciting one ayah attracts your attention, so write down the ayah number, the page number, and then during the day, do not interrupt your recitation. After you finish, you can spare some time to learn the meaning of this ayah. Pondering upon the Quran is one of the greatest acts of worship. Allah the Almighty said in Surah Muhammad, peace be upon him, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ When they ponder over the Quran, or uh, do they have locks over their hearts? May Allah make us amongst those who ponder over the Quran and perfectly